Everybody has a project or projects that they could or should be working on. So please make sure that you are doing that. Photo people, I know that you need me. You're first on the list this morning. The rest of you guys should be working on your projects. When I start the semester out, they are given a large number, like six or eight different assignments. We talk about different materials, different supplies that they may use. Um, most of my projects are theme-based, like the one with the bird's nest. She got that idea from one of the assignments, vocabulary word, of accumulation. And that was her interpretation of the word. Her idea was to create something that was three-dimensional, and she knew that with me she had that freedom that I wasn't going to restrict her, that I wanted her to express herself the way that she could best do it. And that was how she did it. Okay, you have to be able to do this with your eyes closed before you can do your roll of film in here. Okay. The standards are really driven by what the student signs up for, like in photo one. They have to learn the alternative methods first. Then we learn film photography, and those are written in the standards. And as Clyde Butcher will tell you, learn film photography before you go to Photoshop. Okay, well, you need, I need to know whether you know how to use your camera. Okay, first, how do you load your film? The many different mediums and the many different things going on from embroidery to photography to clay to the computer, going the gamut for me is enjoyable. If I had to do one thing all day long, I would get bored. For me, it's, it keeps it exciting and it keeps it moving and it keeps me moving. It challenges me as a person and as an educator to keep up with all these different mediums and all the different students. And so by being the type of person that goes with the flow and can revamp my ideas as they go, it also carries over to the students that they can do that also. You had a question for me about this piece the other day and I told you to wait till you got all the pieces done and I forget what the I think that at some point I just knew I was going to major in art and do art as a career. And I just kept kind of drawing and drawing and drawing after that until, whoa, look, I'm, they're actually pretty good. This works. And having school be an area where I can learn about that is really important to me because you don't get a lot of art experience outside of Classroom or in the world in general. I mean, you see it, but you don't really learn it. You don't have people to, you don't have the environment where you can like learn. I mean, you have, the first time I came into art and I saw everything like that, I thought it was really, really exciting because it's like there's so many different opportunities for things to, that you could do. And our art teacher, she gets all sorts of supplies. You can ask her for any kind of supply you want. And she'll try to order it online and get the best price for it, which is so good. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it was really exciting when I first walked in because there was just so many different things you could do. You know, it doesn't have to be even graphic art like drawing. It can be the performing arts, music, theater, singing, stuff like that. You know, things like that, you know, we're talking about a STEM culture, you know, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. There's a heavy emphasis on that. But at the same time, you know, we need artists of all different aspirations and from all different corners of the earth because that's what you know, kind of brings us together as a people in a, certain, in a metaphysical sense, you know, because it's something that you can enjoy. Whether or not you agree with it, you can enjoy it just aesthetically. Well, I mean, I'm going to darken the inside of the book with so the so marker. Right. Kind of well, either markers or so with pen and ink with, mm -hmm. with your dots or with some type of cross hatching, oh, yeah. just something to shade it. What about regular hatching to keep it going yeah. with the flow, like make it look like, you know, kind of like the fibers, you know? Mm -hmm. the well, collaboration's always good because, you know, you can get feedback, like, you know, almost rapid fire feedback, you know? Just be like, just turn your piece around and be like, hey, how does this look? And they're like, oh, hey, 
that looks good, keep doing that. And you're like, okay, cool. Well, everybody ends up having a critique in this class. It's great, because you can't really learn without a critique. And he's like, oh, that would be so much better. We're gonna, we're gonna do that. Right, okay. I feel like you should put more sticks on this under part here. Okay. I can also like, I, I mean, I just painted these today. Like I can lighten yeah. and darken. Art is an interesting thing. It's a really weird profession because you're expected to pour your heart and soul out into something and then have people say, oh, I like it, I don't like it, whatever. Like, it's based on other people's opinions as well. So to be in an environment where you can learn to find that medium where it's something that you have created yourself but is also attractive to other people or has the meaning that is desired or even to become a better version of it that you wouldn't have expected, it's really good to have that. It not only helps her by the other students critiquing it, but it helps the other students because they have to learn how to critique and it helps them to look at their work a little bit more critically when they are working. I felt like I was an artist since I was little because it's not something that like you have to be talented to be an artist. It's like something like, if you enjoy art, I consider you to be an artist. As for being able to express it in school, that's really important as well, because there are places and there are families, there are situations, you know, where, you know, it won't be normal. They'll be like, oh, why would you want to go to art school? So, you know, having a place to be able to express it, you need to be able to get feedback. You need to be able to tell that this is something you can do, that you have the skill, the talent, you know, a gift for it. I try to give the students as much opportunity as they can. And I also try to exhibit my own work um, and do my own artwork, um, which is an important piece of the pie. The students always want to see what are you doing. Okay. No. When you first start, you've got to get your clay more centered, it was centered. before you open up. I didn't have art till seventh grade. And then we had this teacher up the street that taught out of her basement. So mom sent me to classes with her, which was great. And then when I went to high school, then I fell in love with ceramics. And to this day, it's still my favorite medium. Clay is still my favorite medium. And to this day, I'm still really good friends with my high school art teacher. She's 87 or 88 now, and we're still best of friends. We still talk on a regular basis, and we went to Paris together, to Germany together. We had a great time. When you trim the top, you then have to compress the rim. To have Miss Lauer create this environment where she's able to say, you know, you could, you could do that, you could, that could be better, and give us a lot of instruction. Like, one of the things Miss Lauer really talked about was figure drawing, because figure drawing is the basis of all art. If you can understand the human, you can, it's the most complex thing you can draw, and after you master that, you can master anything, really. And so to have her put a lot of emphasis on really important aspects of art, such as composition, value, and to have her teach you these things is really important because you can't have an education in art without knowing the basics of art. You were just drawing it and stopping it right there. Okay, but it's got to go all the way across. All the way, okay. I guess I could say she's very motherly in a sense. She's very supportive and she's always very proud of what her students are able to do, you know, and you know, we see some of the works that other students who have since graduated have done and you know, Lauer is always so pleased with them. Okay. And you know, you come by, and if, and if she likes what you're doing, you know, okay. she will tell you. She she's she's certainly very outspoken. Well, I wouldn't say outspoken per se, but she certainly very clearly conveys her thoughts. But at the same time, you know, she wants you to do art. That's what you're here to do, and she takes it very seriously. Wonderful. We all call her Lauer because. It's just, we're all kind of friends with her. She doesn't have that like, I'm a teacher, I'm above you kind of thing. She's like down with us. She has conversations with us. She tries to help us the best she can with critiques. She's just really friendly. So it's like, we're all kind of friends. They dropped the miss a long time ago. 
one year it just started that they just called me Lauer and it's meant affectionately. It's not, they don't mean it as disrespect. It's a term of endearment for them. I have had Miss Lauer as a teacher for I think five years right now. <laughs> it's really, I mean, even since middle school, it's just a great thing about Pineview is being able to go through second through 12th grade and have some of the same teachers that you had in middle school. Being at Pineview is, for me, it's a perfect fit. I love it. I love the students. I love being able to work with that level student and being able to verbalize with them the different areas of critiques. They start with me in ninth grade and we start with critiques and group critiques and then by the time they get the next year, the following junior year or senior year, then we move up the ladder and the critique ladder goes gets harder. And like today in class, the photo one kids needed me and then the portfolio child needed a critique. So I sent the portfolio students to the AP students to give her a critique. And knowing that the AP students knew exactly what I expected from them, that I expected an honest critique they did that, and by the time I got back to the student, the student was already acting on the AP students' critiques, what they heard, and they were like, and they like agreed with them. They thought it was a great idea. And that's what it takes. It takes more than one set of eyes to really build a piece and build a program.